Welcome to the Life Celebration Experience, where our work is theater and our business is a stage for creating memorable and meaningful celebrations for each life lived. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the Life Celebration Experience. My name is Jim Cummings. I'm a licensed funeral director, and I head up the training and development for the Life Celebration Group. I'm here today to talk to you about how over the past few years we've been able to weave the strategies, frameworks, and methodologies of a book called The Experience Economy into the way that we communicate consistently with families. Jim Gilmore is here today and he's here to help us understand how we can communicate to families and allow them and empower them and inspire them to be an experiential and a co-creative force. Jim. Great to, Great to see you. Great to see you. Great to see you. Jim, perhaps you could speak to the audience here and give them a little bit of an idea about how Joe and yourself came up with the strategies and processes that you use today. Well, I read Joe's book called Mass Customization, which is really at the core of this. It's about, it's about customization. And it's about going from an agrarian economy of 200 years ago to an industrial economy making physical goods to then a service economy. But today, what we write about is there's an experience economy. Today, consumers want experiences. Okay, so they're not satisfied with what we refer to as same old, same old anymore. Well, it's not about same old at all. In fact, we have this foundational model called the progression of economic value, where you go from the farm, extracting commodities, to, to industry, making physical goods, to services, and then to experiences. Today, what people want today are experiences that engage them in a personal and memorable way. Way. It's something we call the progression of economic value. Well, I think everyone that's here today is starving for more information in that respect, Jim. Perhaps you could lead us down that path. Sure, I'd be glad to. Well, Jim, you can see the entire history of economic progress by looking at the birthday industry. When I was a wee boy, my mother would make my cake from scratch. Now, what does it mean to make a cake from scratch? Well, my mother would actually touch commodities flour, sugar, eggs, cocoa. This is bizarre human behavior in the 21st century. And how much would my mom pay for these commodities? Maybe 10 or 20 cents in terms of some constant dollars. But in the 70s, my mom stopped making a cake from scratch. Instead, she would go to the grocery store and buy a physical good, a cake mix manufactured at a factory. So instead of spending 10 or 20 cents for commodities, she would instead spend one or two dollars for the physical good from which to make the cake. But in the 80s, my mom, like many others, stopped making a cake from the physical good. She would instead call the grocery store and have a cake made on her behalf. And that's a cake-making service for which she would spend maybe $10 or $20, the intangible activity of performing a task that people used to do for themselves. Then the 90s, parents not only outsourced the making of the cake, they outsourced the entire birthday party. Say to Chuck E. Cheese's. So instead of spending 10 or $20 for the cake making service, they would instead spend hundreds of dollars for the birthday experience. So you see here the entire history of economic progress from an agrarian economy based on commodities to an industrial economy based on physical goods to a service economy based on performing services and now to an emerging experience economy where people pay an order of magnitude higher for personal events that engage them in an inherently memorable way. Let's turn now from birthdays to weddings. With a wedding, there's usually both a traditional and religious component to the ceremony but also a more informal and personal celebration that occurs both before and after in the form of the rehearsal dinner and the reception. And think about the number of people who are involved, both family and friends, involved in the planning and also in assuming different roles at different points in the ceremony. And think about the money that's spent in wedding experiences. You see, it's this way in the experience economy. For every life moment, people want to spend more money for a personal experience. It's true for births and for birthdays, for bar mitzvahs, 
for weddings and for anniversaries. And for weddings, we have wedding planners that help people get the more personal experience that they want. So why is it that at the end of life, we don't similarly have planners who help people have the experiences that they want to help celebrate the life of their loved ones? You see, it shouldn't just be when two lives come together to begin a life, but we should be equally concerned about having families have the experiences they want to have at the end of life as well. Welcome back, Jim, and thanks for your uh, excellent explanation of the uh, progression of economic value. You're welcome. Very, very worthwhile. At this time, I'd like to invite forward uh, Frank Joyce, who's a funeral director and the owner of the Joyce Funeral Home in Waltham, Massachusetts, a life celebration community home member. Frank? Nice to have you. Frank, we talked a little bit about many of the challenges that face us today in funeral service. Uh, families buying down, buying less, uh, the uptick in cremation, uh, really the, the most concerning thing, the, uh, the lack of tradition and, and values that we face in funeral service today. How do you think we got here? How, how did this happen? I think, Jim, that <clears throat> over time we um, allowed ourselves to become order takers. Hmm where the family would come in and describe to us what they thought that they wanted. And for a long time, that was fine. In the post-World War II years, the funeral experience was a very rote experience. We knew what to expect, the family knew what to expect. But as the world has changed in many ways, younger families that have newer ideas, that want to have experiences, rather than just services provided to them, expect more. They're not sure what they want, by the way. And the challenge is for us to figure out in advance of their visit to us, what they need, and to be able to provide it to them, to them on a very consistent basis. And Jim's frameworks that we've all learned in the experience economy seem to provide for all of the families that we serve, specifically cremation families who are always searching and looking for something very unique and personal to celebrate the way that they conduct their end of life situations. I think, Jim, with, with cremation, addressing that specifically very often, we've both had the experience where a family will come in and say, uh, Dad just wanted to be cremated. And what I think they're really saying, in fact, what I know the person that makes that statement says to the family really is, I don't want you to go to more time, trouble, or expense to do what you need to do, make things nice. But they don't mean, I just want to be cremated. They haven't thought through what will happen after the cremation takes place. And all of us have had the experience, by the way, we've, we've, we've attended a funeral and after it we've left, and this might seem counterintuitive, but we've said, gee, that was a really nice funeral. And we've had the experience where we've attended a funeral and it has not been an experience that we'd want to uh, elaborate about. It, 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 there's nothing to it other than just having attended. The goal is to provide a, a good experience, a nice funeral for everyone, whether they choose traditional burial or cremation, because you and I both know everybody wants to have a nice funeral, they without exception. Do. They certainly do. You know, I think, Frank, your, your citing of that cremation example it illustrates that I, uh, something I talk about across multiple businesses, that uh, you can't just take what customers say. There's actually three kinds of needs um, obviously, you, you, have, you have spoken needs, what they say. There's also two other types of unspoken needs. There's unspoken needs that are so basic, uh, nobody ever mentions them. If you interview people about what they want in a television set, nobody ever says, well, press the button and it goes on. They, they, there's unspoken needs that are just assumed that you know. But there's also kind of unspoken need because they don't even realize it yet themselves. And, and I view very much uh, in, in, in shifting to life celebrations, Part of this is to play the role of, of helping people understand that, take cremation for example, it's not, that's really just a means of disposal, but it's come to mean the entirety of the experience when in fact that's not what dad would have wanted to have and nor what, what dad deserves. You're exactly right, Jim. Um, and in fact, when, when a family comes in, there, there are basically uh, three roles that we play, three uh, very basic things that we need to provide. 
The first one and the most obvious one is the proper, respectful, tender care of the body. That's really, in the end, what the family cares about. The second, in many instances, is to bring order out of chaos. And the third is to help the family create, with them, an experience that will honor and remember a life that was lived. And that third leg of the stool is the one I think that has sort of gotten away from us in some respects. Not because we don't want to do the right thing, but because for a lot of us at least, we did not have a system and a process and a discipline in place to do it every time and do it well for every family. And that is the key to this. The key to life celebration is the consistency and the quality and the discipline that it brings. That's another part of our progression of economic value is these are different businesses. I mean, the manufacturing of physical goods, you know, caskets and, and other uh, really equipment that's required. I and mean, that's one business requires a certain, certain skill. Different services, that, that's, a certain, that's a business. But experience is a whole new business. It requires a whole new mindset for how to engage with, with, with families, with, with customers. It, it does. W one of the first questions that we, we all ask as funeral directors to the family sitting in front of us is, you know, uh, before I go, go over any information with you, Mr. Gilmore, are there any questions that you have that you'd like to cover first? And I can tell you that this is universally true. The family, even when a death is expected, even with the person who might be older, when a death occurs for the immediate family, their brain is in vapor lock. And the problem is they have a million questions, but they're not sure what the questions are to ask. Well, one of the things, Frank, and I think you've seen this through the life celebration system, is that the efficiencies and the simplicity that are provided in the communication mechanisms that we've woven in through the experience economy allow a family to be in a very comfortable manner to be able to communicate back to us once they know they have permission to slow things down and kind of co-produce that life story. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the uh, differentiators for life celebration is, is a group of like-minded independent film directors that, that serve the same, you know, have the same goal of providing great service every time. Um, the, the great thing about life celebration is that you are funeral directors. There's no explaining that we have that we have to do. Well, to be we able have to get the uh, the inherent paranoia of the guy or the lady on the other end of the phone. We're just as worried about that family as you are because we know that it has to be perfect every time, and there's no such thing as missing the event. Um, one thing I'd like to speak to would just be uh, very personal, and I know you and I talked about this early last year. The staff motivation, the self-actualization, and the fulfillment that takes place when the program and the systems get in place, it gives you a sense of purpose, it motivates the staff, and I know up in Waltham, I was working up there with you for a few weeks, it really re-energized and reinvigorated the staff. It, it did, in, in ways, um, some were expected, some were very unexpected. And it does re-energize us in, in the respect that um, we, we feel good, we always felt good about what we did, what we did, but we never felt good about it consistently. Mm -hmm. And what we lacked was the consistency, the simplicity, the discipline to do this so uh, second nature, as second nature is breathing, it becomes part of the culture of your firm so that any new person coming in knows that they're, they're working with a, a first class organization that wants to get things done right every time. We've all had the experience, Jim, too, of when the mayor of the town passes away, we all do a great job. Every small detail is, is look, looked at. And the next day when you know, you, your friend's mother who may have been in her 80s passes away, you don't do quite the same things. Well, the difference with life celebration is for every single person that life is honored and remembered in a way that it should be and provides great meaning for the family because they help to create the experience with us. You know, in my, my work with uh, helping uh, businesses stage better experiences, I'm, I'm often asked to, to illustrate, well, what's the, what's the value of this? And I often do that by actually showing a, a picture, of, a photograph I took myself to illustrate what's, what's wrong with current. And the photograph that I use actually is from the funeral service uh, business. And we, we have a picture of the, of the slide here. I mean, it's this. I mean, this is the kind of space we subject people to this sort of generic nothingness mm -hmm. 
uh, chairs thrown against the wall. I mean, it's, it's no wonder that, that people don't want to spend any time in this place. And, and one, of the, one of the reasons I'm so excited about what you're doing with Life Celebration is to, is to basically get rid of this world and offer up an, instead an, an environment that allows people to spend more time with their loved ones uh, on, these, on these occasions. Because I, I really think this is a crime, right? To, to have all these loved ones come together and then put them in an environment where the place tells you disperse, get out of here, leave. And I, and I suspect that's exactly the kind of behaviors that you get. Um, and so that's why, again, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be helping the cause here and, and uh, hope that what you're all about is sort of getting rid of that. Well, Jim, you, you had asked me earlier why I decided to become a member of the Life Celebration community. Right. And in large measure, it was to get rid of that. Because despite everybody's best intention, that's what we have to, had to work with. It really was the starting point for a lot of funeral directors. And really what it boils down to in creating an experience for the family, it goes back to the communication skills and the listening skills of the arranger. If we're willing to take the time and listen to the families and listen to the cues that they give us, and, and the more you, it's a progression, it doesn't happen overnight, it's a progression, but over time, um, the cues that they give us are like th they're throwing fastballs at us. If you're willing to listen, you can find out not only who Jim Gilmore is and what he did for a living, but I can find out who he was. Well, well like what you're saying is you listen for the cues, not just the words they're saying. Absolutely. Look for the hints right. for what they want. That, that's more right. than just the, the spoken words. And it goes back to what you alluded to earlier. Families aren't really certain of what they want. They don't, like us, we don't know what we don't know. They don't know what they don't know. It's incumbent upon us to listen intently for those cues and those hints so that we, in turn, can provide for them a meaningful experience to mark the end of a life that was well lived. At the end of it, they'll look back and say, gee, I, I'm exhausted, I, 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 I laughed a lot, I cried a lot. But guess what? I'm, I'm glad we went through that. Well, we've all been running around uh, for so many years uh, worrying about being a little bit too efficient. And our efficiencies across the board, I think, created something that we now recognize through the experience economy, what we call customer sacrifice, Jim, where people get and settle for less than exactly what it is they want. You're a good student in that certification class. That's a good term. Thanks, pal. I appreciate it. Uh, one of the other things that really inspired me and uh, Jerry Givnish and some of the other members of Life Celebration to reach outside of the industry is we started to see in and around the arrangement conference that families were kind of walking away from their faith a little bit, their spirituality, uh, tradition, and uh, you had to be seeing that up in Waltham, Frank. Well, we did, and it's not so much, Jim, that people were willingly walking away from it, it's that the, the, they didn't know how to connect that to an experience when a death occurs. They, they lost that connective tissue that was so natural a generation go, ago. Um, what Life Celebration does is gives us an opportunity to help them reconnect back to their faith community if that's what they want to do. Life Celebration isn't, by the way, about getting party hats and balloons and, gee, grandma's gone, let's have a big party. It's not that. If the family wants to be that, we can do that, but it's not that at all. It's to provide a time and a place um, where, where somebody's life can be honored, can be remembered, and be celebrated. And Life Celebration gives from directors like me the tools to be able to do that. It gives me a support system to be able to do, to do that. That's true of all experiences. You have to do it well. Right? It's one thing to say that the picture I show, that don't do it that way. But as you move to experiences, it does have to be honoring. It has to be done well. And that's why you do have to become a student of experiences as, as you've become. And you do have to figure out how to integrate it into your, into your particular business, which I think you've done. Right. Well, the, the systems and processes, Frank, one of the biggest concerns of most funeral directors is they all say, I already have an incredible overloaded schedule. There's no way I can fit anything else into what I do. And I wonder if after a year's worth of you providing the life celebration environment, you could just briefly speak to the turnaround time that's involved. Let me start this way, Jim. One thing that we've learned to do is that when a death call is received, we don't need, if, if, if we receive a call on a Monday night at 7, we don't necessarily have to meet with the family at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning and have the funeral Thursday morning. There's absolutely no advantage to rushing things when a death occurs. 
instinctively that's how we've all been raised and trained and that's how we, we think we thought things should be. What we've discovered was there's a, a time that the family needs just to catch their breath, recharge their batteries and to reconnect with one another. Just hit the brakes, come together as a family and really think about what's important to them, what that life meant to them and how they want that life to be remembered. Now having said all that, after we go through the process with the family, we'll order the, the, the products that Life Celebration provides to us, the props, if you will, that are added to the experience, the, the things that you can touch, that you can see, you can feel. Um, the turnaround time is incredible. The way I look at it, I have an entire graphic arts design company with state-of-the-art equip equipment that provide the best products at the best price every time when I need it. For years, all of us have from time to time created DVDs and think, gee, that's swell. Oh, I've created memorial folders or prayer cards. But have we done it well? Not really. Have we done it consistently? Never. Well, how about, Frank, speak to briefly maybe something about the accessibility of the team and the, the design and the creativity that we do bring. Uh, in terms of the accessibility, um, because your funeral directors, I've had occasions uh, where I've called you on a Sunday night at 9 o'clock. I've called uh, uh, others connected with the Life Celebration team at all hours of any day of the week. Um, accessibility is outstanding. Well, we operate it as we operate our funeral homes 24 hours a day, right. seven days a week because we are passionate and we are funeral directors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we ought to do now, Jim, is, is sort of open it up to the audience and see what they have to say. I mean, I've enjoyed this dialogue, but let's, let's open it up for, for even more conversation. We, uh, we certainly should. Why don't we do that? Uh, yes, front row. Just questions for Jim Cummings. Jim, uh, Frank alluded to some products, um, and I've seen videos and other products that are offered in, in funeral service, and what differentiates Life Celebration from those? Okay, uh, Life Celebration, um, the backbone, is to treat each family as a unique enterprise. Uh, we're very good at communicating properly with the family so that they understand what we're going to do with the images that they provide us. And we like to think that we have the design capability to make each production of the product, whether it's the video, whether it's a trifold, prayer cards, a large collage, to, to put it together so that it touches back on the very important things that the family has communicated to us. And we're very good at finding out what they are so that each production of the Life Celebration product is truly unique and personal to that family. It's not template driven. Each family story is designed in and around that life that was lived, the hobbies, interests, and passions of that person. Anybody else? Yes. Frank, as you know, our profession is very time sensitive. So how much time does this product take? Uh, it doesn't take any more time than you're spending right now. But what this the Life Celebration experience does for all of us, it, it gives us a consistency, a, a, um, a discipline, um, the, uh, simpl uh, simplicity, if I dare you say that, and a purpose. It repurposes what we do. So we don't spend more time than we normally do but we re refocus on our energy on things that are very, very important to provide for the family. Anyone else? Yes. Um, hi, Jim Cummings. Um, you've mentioned training on numerous occasions. Would you mind explaining what this is all about? Sure, I would. Uh, the Life Celebration Training Program is designed to be extremely effective uh, in a one-week period, five working days as to where we're able to produce a curriculum that allows the funeral home to manage their schedule while we at the same time have staff docking in and out of sessions. If you get busy and you need to pull a person or two, they can leave a session and then revisit that same session later that day or the following day. The curriculum also teaches on each and every touch point, which once again is critical. From the first call uh, through the transfer process, uh, we have a very, very intensive 15-step arrangement conference process that once again inspires the family, slows things down, and allows all of us to focus on exactly what is important to the family in order to facilitate a life celebration event. So the training is inclusive. 
uh, and there is a test out at the end. So everyone in the organization is trained from the top to the bottom. Anyone else? Yes. Mr. Gilmore, oh. I'm a funeral director who has been licensed for about five years, so I'm beginning the early stages of my career. I was wondering how you see this impacting the future of our profession. Uh, well, I think it is your future. I mean, it's great to hear about the personalized goods and the, and the services, but, but, but frankly, what, what families really want is the experience. I mean, those are just merely, uh, goods are the, the props and services are the stage for experiences. So if you're, if you're brand new to this profession, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to, to really use Life Celebration as a platform to create uh, value. Um, in fact, if you're, if you're able to have a prosperous business using Life Celebration, recognize it's only going to be sustainable if, in fact, you are creating new value. So I, mean, I look for people like yourselves really to take the lead and this kind of thing. And, and by the way, to, to sort of do a broader picture, it's exactly this kind of innovation that's needed for the economy as a whole. Uh, as we wrote in the experience economy, goods and services are no longer enough, right? To have a, to have a prosperous and thriving business, it has to be grounded in actual uh, customer needs. And you have to respond to that, I think, with, with experiences. And I really think uh, uh, it provides the key and, and I, I wish you well in pursuing that, that aim. You're welcome. I'd like to add one thing. I'd like to tell this young funeral director, Jim, that our best days are ahead of us. With young people like you that are full of energy and commitment, together with Life Celebration and other like-minded funeral directors, I truly really believe our best days are ahead of us. I'm going to actually share this, too. I'm sort of behind the scenes here. I've, I've been challenging the folks at Life Celebrations to, to think in the broadest possible means about this, because there is more and more interest and commentary on this whole thing. And there's going to, just like there's been a criticism about the, the world of goods, um, there'll be criticism about experiences, and I think you do have to do it well. It does have to be honoring. You've used that word multiple times, and I'm, I'm glad to hear it because I don't want anyone to get the, mis the impression that we're talking about displacing any of the family traditions or the, or the, or the practices of a particular faith. If anything, I want to I want to see those pursued just as rigorously in, 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 the, in, the, tr in the traditional and, 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 and religious ceremonies. But at the same time, I think uh, you bear witness to the fact that, that uh, needs have not been served in the past, and, and I really do think Life Celebration uh, is, a, is a wonderful vehicle to, to start remedying uh, that situation. So I just want to wish you Godspeed in that pursuit. So thanks for having me be a part of it. Thanks, buddy. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining our Life Celebration community. Please contact us at 888-887 3782 or visit us at www.lifecelebrationinc.com.